Whew, sucking some wind. Hey, Mike here from 28 Fish. And today we're putting on some Helwig 3520 helper springs onto our 2003 F350 because we have a huge camper and it weighs too much for this one ton. So what you get in the Helwig kit is enough leaf springs and shackles and U-bolts for two complete springs. You also need an accessory kit, which comes with the additional bolts, nuts, lock nuts, and uh, specialized pieces. There are lots of videos out there on how to do this. So, I mean, they do a pretty good job of showing you how easy it is and how quick they go on and how great they are. The main thing I want to show you here is the problem that I encountered didn't have a solution to. In addition to your one ton springs, there's also this apparatus, this blocking, and as you can see, a broken spring. So this would be, I guess, a factory forward overload spring or aftermarket one. Didn't cut the mustard and it broke right off. Basically, the Helwig has to fit over top of the leaf spring, but the clearance bracket that goes basically right here is way too short to clear all of that extra junk there. So in order to do that, what you got to do is remove these main U-bolts that hold the axle over top of the blocking to the leaf springs. You can maintain this cap. I did it on the other side. You can kind of see it over there. I got that one bolted in right now. So essentially what you got to do is break loose these bolts. Hopefully you don't break your U-bolts. I actually got some made up at Traction, which is a truck supply store. I think it's part of Napa line. Uh, they can custom make those for you. What that'll allow me to do is replace this, maintain this guy and go. So the other thing you're going to need right in here, which goes through the leaf spring stack, is what they call a center pin. It's basically a specialized hardened bolt that holds all the springs together. So you have to get a new one. So the one that's in here is about four and a quarter inches, I think, tall. Uh, maybe five inches, I'm not sure. But the, what, what we needed was about a three inch, three and a half inch. I got a three inch from Minute Muffler, a local kind of spring shop, and that got me just through on the other side. So those are a couple things you're gonna need. So like me, when I tore into this, I figured I'd have it on in no, no time, get the camper on, get going fishing. But uh, no, there's a little bit more to it like there always seems to be. This is why I was grunting there. Uh, broke these bolts loose, but they're still pretty tight. Uh. Get a little breaker bar action. Okay, we'll try the impact wrench now. Guess I got some more grunting to do. We got the two two factory u-bolts off they actually came off not too bad might be able to reuse them but i wouldn't trust it so now this plate comes off just like that and then here is the nut to the center bolt the other one just snapped right off um, if you can see that's all that's left of the leaf spring you can see the cone this, uh, this duck bill they call it, I guess. It's just a spacer for the axle. The center pin goes in there. One little trick that I saw in another video for a different purpose, but it helped definitely is to clamp these together before you take this off because all the holes in those leaf springs will uh, misalign and you'll be fighting with them to uh, get it all lined up again. All right, let's see if we can break this bolt. Strip job. Let's put a little more torque in it. This is why they call it a breaker bar. You can break off the bolts that piss you off. <laughs> oh yeah! Didn't even smash my knuckles. Unbelievable. Okay, let's see if we can knock that leaf spring loose. Maybe so much binding going on there, it might not, that center pin might not pop out. We'll see. <laughs> I 
Another way to do this is pull the whole leaf spring out, but that I don't want to do. So do it the hard way. Oh. <laughs> More power. So that's why you don't use an extension for a punch. I might use the other side uh, center pin as a punch. I'll see if you can get it <laughs> hopelessly jammed in the hole. There, is that. And the center pin's almost coming through. Yeah, not much left of it actually. Imagine that broke. That'd be a bit of a conundrum. Come on, baby. It's kind of threading in. It's probably not a good thing. As long as it's coming up though, that's probably better than banging the crap out of it. Anyway, you get the idea. I'll show you when it's all together. So after some impatient twisting, I banged it in place anyway. <laughs> Only slightly wrecked thread. Now I'm just going to pull the pin the rest of the way up by tightening down the nut. Okay, now that's all tightened up. The pin's going to be held in place. Torsion. Pull the nut off. You want to kind of get it as centered as possible because there's not a whole lot of clearance around the leaf springs. So when you put those new new U-bolts uh, on, they're real tight to the leaf springs. There we go. We got the one new U-bolt in. Pretty slick how they can make this from stock rod. Just five minutes waiting, four done. Unbelievable. And probably a whole lot cheaper than buying from Ford, I would assume. I said they're about 25 bucks a piece. Oh yeah, this seems to help here too. Just wanna <clears throat> stretch them out to the right gap and uh, do that from the top. The next step once you tighten these up is putting in that Hellwig helper spring set. So one thing you gotta note is to uh, orientate the spring to the larger, or sorry, longer portion is to the back. What Hellwig's done is actually put holes in the longer side of each of the four spring sets. So it's pretty easy to know which way it is once you've kind of established that when you're putting it together. As you can see, it fits. It's like about well, two and five eighths wide, so it fits perfectly on these three inch spring sets. The only thing is back here, this last spring, as you can see, it kind of kicks out and uh, the shackle is going to just brush it, so you kind of have to get that right. I'll have to see once I let the weight down exactly what that's going to do. And all there is to do is put the, U, the shorter U-bolts U that are supplied, the square ones here, longer ones there with shackles and a double nut. You leave those loose so that once you put the weight down, you can set the, the tension so that at normal riding height, the shackles are still tight, so that that way you're not uh, getting a lot of rattle. Well, hopefully, if you had the same questions or issues as me, that solves it for you. You definitely need to remove the spacer block and that broken leaf spring. Highly recommend replacing the U-bolts as well in order to fit the Hellwig system over top of your leaf spring. The truck would just waddle down the highway and uh, with all that additional weight at the back, Honestly, trying to counter that by steering, it feels like you're, you're, you're limited with steering or, or, or you don't have very much steering at all. So um, by correcting the ride height and stopping that body roll, it should be a much more comfortable ride. And let's face it, it's probably pretty darn dangerous. I'm sure it was something coming through the mountains. We bought this camper in Merritt, BC, so yeah. Well, we got about probably 30 kilometers on with the Hellwig installed and uh, yeah, I'm sold. There's like zero body roll. It's established the, the sort of ride height and I uh, feel like I have steering back with this big camper. In fact, it doesn't even feel like we're hauling the camper right now.
at some point during our journey here, we'll just have to double check all the torque on the bolts, make sure that the oven comes loose. So that should be the only maintenance we have to do on these Helwig helper springs. I wouldn't recommend airbags. I've never owned them, but I had a recommendation from a mechanic lives in Alberta by uh, the foothills where if you're going to be taking your 4x4 truck with a big camper off road a lot of the guys that put them on up there were blowing them up and frankly the Helwig springs were cheaper the other thing I like about it is that you don't have to adjust them with your normal ride it's not going to affect it it's not going to make it a harder ride as sometimes big trucks are they don't really tighten up until there's a load on where the airbags you have to adjust the pressure off and on as you you know have no load you got to lessen the lessen the pressure when you have a load you have to add it in is from my, what I understand I think I bought these through cap it for about eight hundred thirty seven dollars with the installation kit I know I've seen them a lot cheaper on Amazon but it was convenient to get them in quickly from that company but uh, I hope you can find a better price than that uh, anyway thank you for watching I hope this helped you out especially if you had that overload spring issue like we did or at least that question um, like and subscribe 28 fish we like to put lots of different videos up and uh, here's a little bit of variety and hopefully this was helpful